Okay, thank you. Good morning to everybody. Um, uh, we, we have been uh, working in a paper uh, developed by Iman Lips, Epic Power, and the University of Zaragoza. I will present a brief description about uh, we have made in, in Iman, and Stanisław Yarbidi will do the same. With, uh, they, they will explain the job they, they did, they made uh, in Epic Power and the University of, of Zaragoza. Okay, let's uh, start. Uh, as an introduction, uh, we would like to, to speak about three functions, not three devices. Today, the, the efficiency of the lifts is quite good because of the technologies used in the mechanical and in the electrical areas. Um, if we talk about three functionalities, real-time communications, direct to floor, and how to exceed the nominal speed of the motor in certain cases, we don't add any devices, but we could maybe improve the energy of the lips, the energy of these devices. And we would like to see, if this is correct, which improvements are found. Talking about real-time communications, of course, uh, they allow to share information and they help to improve decision-making. It's important to think about uh, the communications. Be be sorry, it's important to think about the communications between lift controller and frequency inverter, lift control and regeneration and energy storage system, and lift control and other devices such as displays, <coughs> electronic boards, or door operator. Well, once we have real-time communications, we could develop a direct-to-floor solution already known in the leaf industry. On the left, we can see the standard solution with magnets and approach speed. On the right, we have the direct-to-floor solution without any approach speed. Now, the travel curve, of course, depends on distance to destination. And because of real-time communications, modern DTF solutions doesn't need to use the traditional sensor encoder to control the car position in the shaft. We can control the car position in the shaft using only the encoder in the motor. So we have real-time communications, we have direct-to-floor. What happens if we can estimate, because of the real-time communications during the journey, the car load, the motor efficiency, and shaft efficiency? In certain cases, depending on the load in the car, we could overspeed the motor. We could exceed the nominal speed of the motor. Um, for example, we could reach 2.5 meters in a lift of 2 meters. Of course, the travel time will be reduced and we shouldn't increase the electrical demand. So let's have a look to the energy implications of direct-to-floor solution. Of course, we eliminate the approach speed. So the first thing we find is, of course, we have time savings in journey. So we are shorter time traveling, so we are shorter time wasting, wasting energy in losses. So if we talk about the, the, the losses in the motor, we have the dual effect energy losses. So because we are traveling shorter time, these losses will be lower. Once we say that they are lower, the temperature in the motor is expected to be slightly lower because uh, the value of the resistance in the stator. And once again, second time, because of this, we could have energy losses, sorry, um, better energy efficiency in the motor, less energy losses. This is a real lift uh, that, uh, where we have uh, installed the traditional uh, set of magnets and the approach speed and the direct-to-floor solution without using the second encoder in the shaft. We were using just the signals coming from the encoder in the motor. On vertical, we have power. On horizontal, we have time. In blue, we have the solution with direct to floor, and in red, with approach speed. The lift was going down and then going up with empty car. And of course, the areas we have below the lines is the energy the lift is getting from the mains. If we have a look very quickly, when the lift is going down, we can see how the lift traveling without DTF is drawing an area, is drawing more energy than the solution with direct to floor. Because of that, we have found, sorry, we have found that traveling upwards, there is a reduction in energy demand of almost 20% and traveling down about 8%. Another test we did uh, was to do uh, the same uh, 
experiment in a real lift in our test tower. It was a bigger lift, 13 people traveling at one meter per second, 15 meters travel distance, empty car, and we, we, we tried to, we, we, we did send the lift up and down, okay? And basically on orange, we can see the savings, okay? We, we tried to do uh, journeys between first and second floor, first and third floor, and first and fourth floor. So the distances traveling were different. And what we have found is shorter journeys, the savings are greater in percentage and more significant. Well, if we pass now about how, uh, if we talk now about the, 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 the overspeed uh, of the motor, how, how can we travel faster the nominal speed of the motor, once again we have shorter time traveling. So shorter time, once again, wasting energy and losses. This is a real lift, once again the test tower. Uh, we did install a lift of 2 meters per second, 50% balance, 15 meters travel distance. We have a lift going up and down. On vertical, we have power, horizontal time. In red, we have the lift uh, working at 2 meters per second and in blue at 2.4 meters per second. Uh, if we have a look to, 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 the, to the graph on the right, we can see that we have an area where the blue one the lift traveling faster is drawing more energy from the mains. So until here, we are not having energy savings. However, because we are traveling faster, we start to decelerate faster, and we have here an area where we have found energy savings. Because of that, in this test, we found that going up, we have a saving of 4.47%, and going down, 0. 50%. One of the things we would like to do now with this data we have taken with the oscilloscope is to simulate the same lift but traveling, at, traveling in a higher shaft where the travel distance is 18 meters. We thought that uh, more significant, uh, we, we, we think that uh, the, the savings must be higher because we are more time traveling, so the distance, uh, the differences between uh, the lift traveling at 2 meters per second and 2.5 meters per second will be different. So this is a simulation, this is not real, but it uses the, 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 the test made before, and what we have found is an energy saving higher going up and going down. Of course, the time saving is also an important thing. So conclusion could be longer journeys could have, could produce greater savings, and these savings are to add to the previously savings of direct-to-floor solution. Well, another thing we would like to speak about is the standby mode. Of course, this, this mode is available in, in many devices today in the lift industry, as the displays, frequency inverters. Because of these reasons, because uh, they, they need some time to start up, to, to get the ready mode, because they need to have some uh, the information in their, in their memory, they pass to a low level of consumption, and this is the standby mode that everybody knows here how it is. The idea here could be what we could do if we have real-time communications. Maybe we could have only the lift controller on standby, and we could disconnect completely these devices. This could be a good idea, talking about energy efficiency once again. If we put an example, talking about the frequency inverter, we could think about disconnect completely the device when the lift is on a standby mode. If we do that immediately, we have these three points to resolve. We can damage the frequency inverter, we can reduce the lifetime, or maybe we cannot get the ready mode quickly switching the system back on. If before this connection we get information from the device and we keep the information in the lift controller, we could control the temperature of the IGVTs, we could control the DC bus state, and we could control the car position in the shaft because as with real-time communications, we could get a direct-to-floor solution without second encoder in the lift, sorry, second encoder to control the, the, the car position in the shaft. It's very important that the position is controlled in the lift controller. So it's very important to have this position in the memory and very quickly, very rapidly, as soon as we switch the system back on, we pass the information to the frequency inverter. 
we, we have here the information of two very well-known uh, frequency inverters, European inverters, uh, and we can see that they draw 13 watts, 8.7 watts on standby mode. With this idea, we could pass to zero watts. And now I'm going to pass the device to Stanis. Thank you, Vicente. So I, I am going to, to be a little bit deeper in uh, genetic solutions, especially in one of them uh, dealing with energy storage, local energy storage. So, bueno, once again, <laughs> I'm going to pass uh, fast and uh, I start here. So this is what we have in conventional uh, drives. The AC side uh, input, the output must be, must be also e AC, so we are forced to use a DC, uh, DC voltage uh, part. What happens when the lift is motoring? It's simple. The energy comes from, from the line, okay? It's a rectifier and later on is uh, inverted. What happens when the lift is uh, generating? So <coughs> the energy comes from the, from the lift, tries to go to the line, but as the rectifier is not bidirectional, it's, uh, it's forced to, 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 st to stay here. And if uh, no braking resistor is present, this voltage will increase till the inverter explodes. So uh, it's uh, mandatory to, to have a, a braking resistor in such a way that this resistor is, is burning the, the excess of, of energy. What can we do uh, in order to improve uh, uh, the efficiency? This is only one of the possible uh, uh, solutions. Uh, we can add the energy, uh, an energy storage system, energy recovery system, with Basically, it needs two, two elements. The energy storage uh, elements itself, batteries, ultracapacitors, something like that, and the power electronics, which is uh, achieving the, the transfer from left to right and from right to left. So uh, what's happened? Uh, the fact is that uh, the, this, uh, the energy storage device is li limiting the energy and the, the transfer, the power electronics device is limiting power. How can these, uh, these limits affect um, to, to, to the system? So let's suppose that uh, we are generating. In this case, uh, we, we have no limits, okay? All the energy is uh, stored. Sometimes maybe we have a limit, uh, a power limit. So part of the energy is stored, but uh, the other part must be loose. Uh, lost at the braking resistor, uh, and if we have, if the if the uh, storage device is full, uh, we cannot uh, follow uh, storing, so all the energy must be uh, uh, lost at the braking resistor. We have the, almost the same when we are motoring; we can provide almost all the energy, maybe, but if we have a power limit, we can provide only the part of the power that we are able to, 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 to provide, and the, the difference comes from the line. And uh, if we have uh, an em empty uh, energy storage device, we are uh, retrieving, we are getting all the energy from the line. So if we use the same example as uh, Vicente has shown before, uh, we can compare the effects of this limitation with two different uh, devices. Let's suppose that we have a device uh, energy storage uh, system with a power limit of 3.5 kilowatts or 6.3 and with different energy uh, capabilities. And here we have a generator generating phase and a consumption phase, okay? Uh, both them are exactly the same curves. The event is what we are able to do with uh, different devices. Here you can see that we have some power limit. We are not able to, to get all the generator energy but in, in this case, we have higher power, so we have no problems. We are getting all the, all the energy. Later on, we, can, we, are, we must provide this energy to, to the lift. Of course, we have some effici efficiencies, so we are not, uh, the, the energy balance is not perfect, and we know that we are not able to provide all the energy. And here is where we have the energy limit. And in, in this case, we have more energy, so we are able to, to, to provide uh, higher energy value. Then depending on the type of use, we can get 
uh, energy saving up to 65%. This is a theoretical value. And I must pass the... Okay. Okay, so okay. starting from this point, we have real-time communications, direct to floor. We can modify, we can overspeed the motor, and we can storage the system. Sorry, storage the, store the energy. We can store the energy. So we have seen that sometimes we have, uh, because of the energy levels the lift manage with, sometimes we can have limits in the direct, uh, direct current converter. Because of that, Stanis has explained that we need to use the braking resistor, and sometimes we have to use the energy from the mains. But we could have more energy in the capacitors, or maybe we have energy in the capacitors and we cannot use it. So if in the lift control we have real-time communications with the direct current converter, and we control also the energy that we have uh, in the capacitors, <coughs> Depending on traffic conditions in the building, we could modify the travel speed. If we can modify the travel speed during the journey, we can adjust the power level. We don't modify the energy, but we can manage better with the energy coming from the capacitors or going to the capacitors. Very rapidly, as conclusions, direct to floor, uh, it can be a standard, it produces energy savings, especially traffic between floors. And in modern solutions with uh, real-time communications, we don't need the traditional se second encoder. Uh, if we overspeed the motor, we can reduce the travel times, energy savings once again, and we could manage better with the traffic in the building. Standby modes, we can switch completely the devices off, energy savings. And radio systems, it's clear that they are going to storage capabilities, the use of energy sources, and if we combine them with these previously three functions uh, studied, we could increase the energy savings. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.